In many ways, this is a follow-up to a Musings video about choices in games that I did some time ago, but coming at it from a slightly different angle. Now, I would imagine that most gamers by now have heard of this particular title, and about how it's something of a deconstruction of the um, Call of Duty-style modern military shooter. And, you know, as a game, it's fairly entertaining, and the story is very well told and very well presented indeed, and on that basis alone I would recommend it. But, it didn't have the impact on me that it has had on many other gamers. As I write this, it's been about half an hour since I finished playing it, and I know exactly why the impact failed on me. Choices. Or, more specifically, the lack thereof. At the end of the game, Hallucination Conrad takes no small amount of glee in pointing out every choice you made during the game, and that because of those choices, Dubai is dead. It's meant to be the ultimate sucker punch, you know, everything that you've done up to this point has been to get this guy, but only it hasn't. It's been because you wanted to be the hero, it's because you wanted to save the day, it's because you wanted to be the big I am. We have to choose. The truth, Walker, is that you're here because you wanted to feel like something you are not, a hero. But for me, that moment fell flat. And it fell flat because the choice uh, Conrad so smugly claims you always had is laughable. Now, I do agree that there is always a choice. Always. The only thing that changes is how well you can live with the consequences of making that choice. And the choices Conrad refers to all basically boil down to do what the game wants you to do to progress the story, or stop playing the game. Walker's mental breaking point is the white phosphorus attack that kills innocent civilians. Are those... Civilians? Where'd they come from? There's no camp here. They took them from the nest. That hotel back at the storm wall? No, 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 those can't be the civvies that got kidnapped. It's not possible. Yeah, it is. That's why Gould stormed this place. He didn't want the gate. He was trying to rescue his people. This is your fault, goddammit! Stop right there, Lugo. Now, this was, I'm sure, meant to be a gut punch of the highest order. A veritable, look what you did, moment. But for me, it fails because of one thing. The lack of a proper in-game choice. It's the same problem that I had with Bioshock. The points these games were trying to make would have been a lot stronger had there been an in-game choice on the matter. I mean, Bioshock's whole would you kindly shit only works if you can progress in-game in some manner by not doing what you're told. And similarly here. As soon as the choice presented to you involves an out-of-game action, i.e. do what the game wants or stop playing, it breaks the immersion of that game. The only way to avoid using white phosphorus and incinerating innocent men, women and children is to stop playing the game. You know, we might not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. No, there's really not. You can't try a stealth approach. You can't be selective with your targets. Cover me, 
If you can't turn around and go home. Graceman, where are you at? <laughs> you either burn them all, or you go and play something else. You know we, we might not have a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. No, there's really not. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Jaeger. I, I get what you tried to do, but for me, it fails. The story moments in games that I remember the most, the ones that had the most impact on me personally, were ones where I had some measure of in-game choice. Knights of the Old Republic 2 had many such moments, a lot of which I remember for the choices that I didn't make. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines had moments that made me feel like a complete bastard, it had moments that made me feel like an amoral slimeball, and it had moments that made me feel like a basically decent human being, solely from having in-game choices. Spec Ops failed on me because as soon as the choice on offer leaves the game, I become responsible for nothing that happens within the game. The game becomes another round of set piece after set piece, all following a nice linear path. Despite what the game tries to tell me, I am no more responsible for what happens to the characters here in this linear tale than I am the characters in a novel or a film, just because I read the novel or watched the film. I enjoyed the gameplay, even if it wasn't stunning. I was intrigued and very entertained by the story, even though I suspect I wasn't supposed to be entertained, and I would like to see more games that deal with subjects like war in a far more mature fashion than the Bang Zoom spectacle of Call of Duty. But the thing is, I doubt whether the sort of gamer Spec Ops is having a pop at would play in the first place, leaving the creators effectively preaching to the choir. I mean, this is by no means a bad game, and the story is excellent, but by the finish, I realise that, narratively speaking, I may as well have been watching a film, and the in-your-face preaching of Hallucination Conrad really got on my nerves. Overall, I think Jaeger were trying to be too clever with the narrative, whilst not being clever enough with the game itself. And all for the want of a couple of real in-game choices, their message left me cold.